Hello, and welcome to this week's video lesson on dividing decimals by a whole number. Before we begin, let's look at our learning and language goals. Our learning goal is I can divide decimals to the thousandths by a one digit number. And our language goal is I can talk about dividing decimals using words like tenths, hundredths, thousandths, decimals, whole numbers, divisor, dividend, and quotient. St. Pierre Jolie is a small town in Manitoba, and every August it's home to the Frog Follies Frog Jumping Contest. The longest jump on record at the Frog Follies is 5.18 meters. That has nothing to do with this math problem. I just read it when I was putting this together and it blew my mind. Five meters, a frog jumped five meters. I don't think I could jump much more than maybe one one and a half if I was doing long jump. I don't know. It's been a long time, but can you imagine a tiny little frog jumping 5.18 meters? Insane. Anyways, let's talk about this girl here and her frogs. This is Rochelle and Rochelle entered three frogs into the frog follies. The total distance the frogs traveled was 4.92 meters. About how far did each frog travel? What do we need to do to solve this problem? Pause for a moment and think if you can come up with a strategy. Let's start by asking ourselves what the question's asking. And that last bullet point there kind of says it all. About how far did each frog travel? Now that sentence also has some clue words in it. Can you see any clue words in there? Take a moment to think about it and see if you can identify them. I noticed two clue words in that sentence, and those clue words are about and each. About tells me that I may not need to find an exact answer, but I'm looking for something close to the exact answer. And each tells me that I'm probably going to need to use division. I mean, this is a lesson on division, but apart from that, um, each is a clue word for dividing things into equal groups, and that's what division is. So when I see each, I'm already thinking I have to divide things into equal groups. In this case, I'll be dividing the total distance the frogs traveled by the number of frogs, three. Now, the reason my answer isn't going to be exact is because maybe one frog jumped a lot farther than the others, and we don't really know that. But by dividing by three, I'll end up with three equal numbers. Um, and that may not actually represent exactly what happened at the event, but it's okay. I don't have the exact information on how far each individual frog jumped, and I'm not being asked to figure that out. That word about, um, tells me that I am looking for the approximate distance each frog traveled. And because the only information I have is the total distance and the number of frogs, when I divide, I'm going to be getting an equal number for the distance that each individual frog jumped. Now that I know what the question's asking and what operation I'm going to use to solve it, I need to know the exact numbers that I'm going to have to use in my equation. So I need to know the total distance. And I see here in the problem that it is 4.92 meters and the number of frogs, three. So let's do it. First, remember how we set the problem up. We put our long division symbol on our page. Then we put the dividend, which is the number to be divided inside the symbol like this, 4.92. That's the dividend. So it goes inside the symbol. Next, we put the divisor or the amount that we're dividing by on the left side of the symbol like this. And our answer will go above this line. It'll go right here. And the answer to a division problem is called the quotient. So that's where the quotient will go. All right, so we are going to solve this problem 4.92 divided by three. Now you see I have my decimal in here and I'm using graph paper to line up all of my numbers and it's going to help me keep them in nice even columns. So I highly, highly recommend that you do the same. I am going to begin by moving that decimal point 
directly up, straight up. This is the one nice thing about dividing by um, dividing decimals using long division is you don't have to worry about counting the number of zeros or anything weird like that to know where the decimal place goes. You just move it straight up. Okay, now I'm going to make a note here so we see this is our ones column. I'll put a little O there and I'm going to put a T here to show that this is our tenths column and a little H right here to show that this is our hundredths column. Okay, now we have our mnemonic that we were going to use to remember does McDonald's sell burgers, DMSB, divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. Now, our first step, D for divide. So I'm going to say four divided by three. How many times can three go into four? Because that's what dividing is. Well, we can put one because four is greater than three, but it's not big enough to divide by two or any number bigger. This would have to be at least six because six divided by three equals two. Okay, so there's one three that can fit in four. We divide it. Okay, so we've done that step. Yay. Now our next step is multiply. And we're going to multiply the first digit of our quotient by our divisor. One times three. And we place it right underneath the first digit of our dividend. One times three makes three. We did our multiplication. Our next step now is S or subtraction. Four minus three equals one. Now we've done our subtraction and it's time to do bring down B. We take our nine. I'm just drawing a little arrow to show where we bring it down, but really only use that if it's helpful for you. We bring down our nine. And now we have 19 here. So now our next step is to go back and do division again. And I've erased all of my little check marks because we're going to do all of the steps all over again. We're going to start with 19 now as our dividend and divide that by three. So 19 divided by three. That's not going to work exactly, but 19 is very close to 18, which I know is divisible by three. 18 divided by three equals six, and it's very close. So I'm going to put six here, and I've done my division step. Now it's time for multiplication. Six times three is 18. I knew that because I was just talking about it. I did my multiplication step. Next step is subtraction. 19 minus 18, that gives us one. And we still have a number left here to bring down. So we're going to bring it down. And again, you can use a line if it's helpful. Bring down that too. And see how my graph paper is really helping me keep all my numbers lined up so I'm not getting mixed up. And now I have 12. 12 is the dividend that I'm working with divided by my divisor, 3. Wow, that one I know off by heart, it is four. Four times three. I forgot to erase my check marks to show that I was doing these steps all over again. 12 divided by three makes four. I did division. Four times three, that's my multiplication step, that makes 12. So I write 12 here. Now I'm on to my subtraction step. 12 minus 12 equals zero and there's nothing left here to bring down and i got a lovely zero so i don't even have a remainder if you want you could re write r zero or remainder zero but you don't have to when there's no remainder and you see i've got my answer 1.64 is my quotient so 4.92 divided by 3 equals 1.64 and we did it all just following these four simple steps over and over. All right, now it's your turn. 
Use long division to find out about how far Luke's frog traveled in one jump. Just follow the steps I just showed you and you'll be successful. I believe in you.